Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I am your instructor, Richard Rost. In today's video, we're going to try to answer the question and show you how to fix why you might get the error message saying, this record set is not updatable. I see it all the time. It's a common error. You also might see variations of that, like operation must use an updatable query. So in this video, we'll try to figure out why that happens, and I'll give you some tips for fixing it. Today's question comes from Ernesto in Arlington, Texas, one of my gold members. Ernesto says, I wanted to add a state T table to my database so that I could have the state abbreviation and the full state's name. This way in my forms and reports, I could show the full state name, even though the abbreviation is entered into my customer T table. Once I do that and make the join, however, I get the error message that this record set is not updatable and I can't change anything in the form or the query. What did I do wrong? Well, Ernesto, I get asked this all the time. Usually, unfortunately, it's from customers like you who didn't learn how to build your databases from the ground up with me. You, you're one of my new customers. You just signed on as a gold member, and you sent me a copy of your database, which I was happy to look at, but you've got a couple things in there that are wrong. One of them is you're not properly using primary keys in all of your tables. Let me show everyone else what you did because I see this a lot. Okay, here I am in my Tech Help free template. You can download a copy of this from my website if you'd like to. I'm not going to show you Ernesto's database. That's private. I keep that stuff private. But basically what Ernesto did was he added a state table. The state table has the abbreviation and then the full state name. He wants to be able to have New York or Florida spelled out in his forms and reports. I get it. But those of you who are students of mine from the beginning, from Access Beginner 1, you'll notice that something's missing. And if you go into Design View here, all right, notice there's no primary key in this database. All right, he created state and state name, and he didn't turn the primary key on. So let's see what happens here if we use this table in a join. Let's create query design. It's a simple join, right? We got customer and we got state. Now notice, first of all, Access didn't make that relationship. Well, we can make the relationship manually by going from state to state. And that links up just fine. I'm going to close that. And let's bring in customer ID, first name, last name, and then we'll bring in, we'll bring in state from over here. It doesn't matter. And then state from this side. Let's save this as customer with state Q. And if I run this query, that it looks okay. It looks fine. Notice there's no new row on the bottom here. Okay, that's your first indication that your record set is not updatable. Now, you might hear me talk about programming record sets, which you can use VBA to loop through uh, the records in a table and stuff. That's different. Record set generically means the records under your table or query or form. Okay, this is the set of records or the record set. And if I try to edit right now by, by clicking on any one of these and typing, it says this record set is not updatable. That's the error message he's getting. You'll get that in the query. You'll get that if your form is based on this query. So how do we fix it? Well, in this particular case, the easiest way to fix it, go into design view of your state table. Now you can make this your primary key, that's okay. I personally prefer auto numbers, but in this case, Ernesto, I'll allow it, all right? Just come over here and click on the primary key field. That turns on a little key symbol. That means that state is now indexed, no duplicates, which is what you want. You don't want two New Yorks in here, right? And now save this, close it. And now if I go back into that query, notice now it's updatable. See, I can come in here and change this to William. All right, be careful though, because you can update both sides of this. So if someone types in Florida does like that, it updates that record in the table. So it's going to update all of Florida's. So you might not want that side to be updatable. I would also suggest, Ernesto, that you come in here and make this an outer join. Because right now, if you notice, you're not seeing anybody who doesn't have a state that's in the state table. If you come in here and make this an outer join like this, now you'll see everybody, whether or not they have a linked state. And you'll see Iowa is missing from your, your state table. Now, Jean-Luc Picard is from France, so he doesn't have a state at all. But if I come over here and type in Iowa, it also says cannot enter value into blank field on one side of the outer join. You can edit it if it exists, but you can't add new ones here. 
Okay, so you have to go back to the state table to put Iowa in. Now, if you want to see this in your form, you'll have to just change what the form is bound to, bind it to this query instead. So go to design view, first of all. Let's bring in all the fields from customer T. All right, bring in that star, and then I'll get rid of the other stuff so we don't have duplicates. Okay, and I like to see the star on the left, so I'm going to slide that over to the left like that. Now, if I run this, I've got all the fields from the customer table and the state name from the state table. Save that. Now we just go into our customer form, design view, and if you want to see the state name in here, I'll just do this. Let's just move country out of the way. And we'll slide zip code down here. You can make it pretty later if you want to. And then we'll just add the state name field right there. Let's make city a little bit smaller. All right, state. And then go to, oh, we have to change what's bound to, right? Double click here. Change this from customer T to customer with state Q. Now I'm getting my records from the query, which is fine. Okay, because now the query is updatable. Go to add existing fields, find the state name, drag it over here and drop it. All right, I'm going to get rid of that. And we'll put state name right there. Okay. And now save it, close it, open it back up again, and look, Florida pops up in there. All right, and if I, if I were to change this to like Texas, boom, Texas shows up in there now. So that's kind of neat. That's kind of handy. Or you could use a combo box to do the same thing. That's probably how I would do it. But this works. This is fine. This is how you've already built your database, so there's no need to redesign the whole thing. Personally, I would make it so that field is grayed out and not enabled, so they can't change your whole state table. So what you could do is, I like to do something like this. Make this gray. Like, let's go with that color gray. So they know they can't change it. And then go into its properties, and under data, set uh, locked to yes, or enabled to no, either one. All right, now if you come into this form, you can't type in this field. It's locked. You can see it, right? You can come back in here and put that to Florida, and it'll update, but you can't change it, which is how I'd want that. So that by far is the number one reason why people get that message. I get, this, I get asked this at least once a week. I see it in the forums all the time. I see it in different groups that I'm in. Everyone's like, why can't I update my query? Number one, they make queries that are way too complicated. They got 10 different tables in the query and all these join lines everywhere. Once your query gets to a point where it's too complicated, then you can't make it updatable anymore. It just acts as says, no, I'm done. If that's the case, like if you're doing orders and order details or customers and contacts or vendors and products, you really should be using a form with a subform. Okay, don't try to put that together in one query and then try to make one form on that and update it. Use a form and a subform. I've got videos on making subforms. I'll put a link down below, go watch that. All right, generally, if you've got, if you've got one table with a, a little helper table to get a field like this, that's usually okay. I wouldn't worry about that. But if you've got two big sets of data, right, like customers and orders, okay, and you wanna bring all this together, no. I mean, y yeah, it might work, but you shouldn't. You should have orders as a subform inside of customers. Okay, that's what subforms are for. Especially if this is a one to many relationship, one customer with many orders. If it's one to one, if it's like customers with, you know, extended information, like you got a separate table to keep all the stuff that you don't normally collect, yeah, that's fine. Okay? But one to many, many to many relationships definitely should be in a subform. But the big reason why it usually doesn't work and you get a non-updatable record set is because people forget to make a primary key. And when you design the table, it even asks you, are you, are you do you want to make a primary key? Are you sure? And it'll make an auto number for you. And then what I've, I've seen this happen in my classes a lot. People get it. Oh, I don't need that ID. They delete it. They don't recreate another primary key field. And now your relationships like this don't work. Okay. Want to learn more? Well, I've got 18 total reasons why your record set might not be updatable. By far the biggest one is that you're missing a primary key in your related table. That is the biggest reason why. That's probably why at least 90% of the cases that I see are involving that. But there's other reasons too, like people using aggregate queries, union queries, cross-tab queries, your fields are locked, you're not running your database out of a trusted location. There's all kinds of reasons. And in the extended cut for members, I'll go over all of them. It's 15 minutes long. We'll talk about all of them. And... Um, We'll hope to figure out why your database is giving you an, up, an unupdatable record set. That's in the extended cut for silver members and up. And of course, gold members can download my databases. 
and they get priority in the tech help question queue. So become a member today. How do you become a member? Click the join button below the video. After you click the join button, you'll see a list of all the different types of membership levels that are available. Silver members and up will get access to all of the extended cut tech help videos, live video and chat sessions, and more. Gold members get access to a download folder containing all the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus my code vault where I keep tons of different functions that I use. Platinum members get all the previous perks plus access to my full beginner courses and some of my expert courses. These are the full length courses found on my website and not just for access. I also teach Word, Excel, Visual Basic, ASP and lots more. But don't worry, these free tech help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and feel free to post any comments that you have. I do read them all. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free, and click the bell icon and select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Click on the show more link below the video to find additional resources and links. You'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted, so if you'd like to get an email every time I post a new video, click on the link to join my mailing list. Now, if you have not yet tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of building databases with Access. It's over three hours long. You can find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. And if you like Level 1, Level 2 is just $1. And it's also free for all members of my YouTube channel at any level. Want to have your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my Tech Help page and you can send me your question there. Click here to watch my free Access Beginner Level 1 course, more of my tech help videos, or to subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching this video from AccessLearningZone.com.